And now, State of Ohio's Aerospace and Defense Strategy. Well, thank you, uh, thank you so much for the uh, for the opportunity to speak uh, today uh, on uh, on the governor's aerospace and defense strategy uh, as we go forward to uh, to 20, uh, 2030. It's a tremendous uh, tremendous opportunity. I I really appreciate uh, the time uh, the time here today. Um, of course, I bring uh, greetings from Governor Dewine. This is a very very important topic to him, um, just as the aerospace and defense ecosystem is critically important to the state of Ohio, to its economy, to its, to its people. Um, you, you know, the military and the federal workforce, our installations, our industry are all vital links in our nation's security and in Ohio's security, its economy. And it's a and it, and it's very 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 future. So I think today really reflects um, Governor Dewine's emphasis on the military, our installations in the state, and their contributions to our nation, uh, and uh, and the vibrance of our uh, of our economy. So uh, so again, very very important topic. Um, I want to thank you know first of all WBI for the opportunity to bring together um, so many speakers in in a highly successful series of events. Um, this is great work, and the engagement is uh, is extraordinary. So so thank you for all you do. You know we really continue to grow. I, I think the clusters um, in the aerospace industry. And I say clusters because it's not just one. It's not just military. It's not just industry, uh, it's a variety. It's not just research and development. It is a variety of different clusters that each add to, uh, to, to the success of our, uh, uh, of our economy. Um, you know, it, when we look back at uh, certainly the Wright Patterson experience from BRAC 2005, not only did Ohio successfully uh, win BRAC 2005 and forestall closures, but actually attracted jobs and, and, and uh, a huge construction uh, opportunity uh, on, uh, on base. Now the growth is approximately a thousand per year for the next uh, for the next two to three years at least. But those type of, uh, of wins require constant engagement. So I really appreciate how we are continually engaging, not only in Wright-Patterson, but expanding that, uh, that concept, those lessons learned, those strategies and those tactics around the rest of the state to our other installations. Um, and, and so this represents a great opportunity to do just that, to export winning strategies and taking advantage of this at, at this present moment. So what I thought I'd do is talk a little bit about how aerospace and defense really fits into the big picture um, and you know, really what the governor's focus is. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, about, uh, uh, about two years ago, the governor gave me broad, broad guidance uh, in preparing for this job. Um, and you'll remember that in uh, February of 2019. He said, watch out for our uh, defense installations in, uh, in Ohio and the people. Uh, and I do, we work, work very closely with the governor's uh, military and veterans liaison, Tammy Puff, but, um, but this is really very, very broad guidance. And in execution, um, it falls, I think, into four primary thrusts. And I, I wanna continue to emphasize those four primary thrusts because I think it really provides a framework for Ohio's success uh, in moving forward. Um, you'll notice as we go through these, that as we talk the individual four pillars, if you will, of aerospace and defense in Ohio, I talk about them as individual pillars, but, but clearly th there's gray zone between them. They are not as isolated as, as individual pillars. Understanding the gray zone, and you'll see that, but it's a great way to really frame the issues, the tasks, and the strategies moving, moving forward as we, as we do. So, um, th those four pillars are, are, are really these, and, and we, we can talk a little about each one of uh, each one of them. Um, the, the first, and really what I think is the foundational pillar, is to preserve, protect, defend, and expand 
the federal aerospace and defense installations in Ohio. You'll notice that that the word federal is in different color. You know, it's highlighted, it's underlined. That's because it's not just the military installations in Ohio that are critical, but it's also the federal aerospace uh, installations that, that comprise NASA, Glenn, both Lewis site in Cleveland and Plumbrook site in uh, Sandusky. Uh, and, and to go around the state is to really catalog critical uh, defense infrastructure that is in that is all in Ohio that represents a key crucial magnet. That's why this is the foundational pillar, right? You can start with Wright Patterson in the Southwest and all that Wright Patterson entails, whether it's Life Cycle Management Center. Uh, whether it is the Air Force Research Laboratory, Headquarters Air Force Materiel Command, the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, the Air Force Institute of Technology, the 88th Air Base Wing, or 81 of the multitude of organizations that are Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to include a flying operation with the reserves there in the C-17s, uh, it, it's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely uh, an incredible base. But as you work your way around the state, you get to the Joint Systems Manufacturing Center, an active duty base in Ohio. We, we typically call it the, uh, the Lima tank plant, but, but the bottom line ultimately is that this is a, uh, that this is a, key, uh, a, a key location in, uh, in Ohio that, we, uh, uh, that, that is uh, absolutely uh, critical to the defense infrastructure. Um, the Defense Systems manu uh, Manufacturing uh, or Defense uh, Systems Supply Center in Columbus, um, DLA uh, there, and uh, it's DLA Land and Maritime Headquarters, right? And uh, fully, fully, 50% um, of the defense budget goes through Columbus, Ohio. Absolutely, uh, absolutely incredible. But then uh, taking a look at the, uh, at the reserve bases, Youngstown, of course, with a national mission, as well as uh, aerial spray mission, as well as the Guard. The fourth uh, largest guard in the United States and the second largest, uh, uh, the second largest air guard in the United States. So it's it's incredible in terms of Ohio's federal aerospace and defense installations. And again, NASA, Glenn, both Lewis site doing incredible work in um, in aviation, in propulsion, in space communications, but also Plumbrook with space test facilities that are unmatched in the world, absolutely in the world. Um, the, the next piece is really um, the second pillar is to increase the research portfolios and statewide synergies of Ohio's national level laboratories. Now, really, in this context, I'm really talking about uh, several, uh, several key ingredients. Number one is the Air Force Research Laboratory at Wright-Patterson, the, the epitome of aeronautical research in the United States, arguably the leader in the world insofar as the United States leads the world in aerospace research and development. Incredible capability, absolutely incredible capability. NASA Glenn, of course, in Plumbrook and uh, in uh, Lewis site in Cleveland. We've talked a little bit about that, but there's also Ohio's national level laboratory, that's Battelle. And Battelle doing incredible work, not only in national security, but in bio and bio and defense. Uh, and research and development, human performance, and the also, of course, uh, national laboratory system. So uh, this is all underpinned by Ohio's um, by Ohio's research institutes of the national laboratories. Incredible network, an incredible network tied together by the Ohio Federal Research Network. So our universities play a huge part in this second pillar. Again, uh, effectively unmatched in the nation when you talk uh, when you talk to the point of aerospace research and development. These are facilities that work at orders of magnitude greater than some of the largest defense contractors and aerospace contractors in the world. And that offers opportunity. The third pillar is really to work with Jobs Ohio to preserve and expand Ohio's aerospace and defense industry. And that's a large part of what we're, gonna, what we're talking about today. The goal is really to aggressively attract jobs, mission, and companies to Ohio. Key in that is to build on Ohio's aerospace and defense industry that exists now. And I'll show you a map that I think is, uh, is very, very telling to this point. Um, and then the final pillar is really to maintain and grow the workforce. I mean, key, uh, key ingredient of the governor, the lieutenant governor, 
focusing, you know, in, in a foundational way um, on uh, on STEM. In other words, the preparation to enter a highly technical, science-rich and math-rich uh, workforce, uh, but also uh, focus on the university. Uh, educated workforce, as well as the um, career craftsman trained uh, tech center workforce, who who are really the craftsmen who shape the um, the systems and the industries that uh, that we're talking about. To see a uh, to see the the craftsmanship in the welding and in the welders at the Lima tank plant is incredible. So uh, so. They really support pillars one, two, and uh, two and three. Um, I, I mentioned the map, and I think this map is uh, is very very telling because it really points out the uh, the sheer breadth of the uh, of the defense and aerospace industry in Ohio. It's not located in one area. But broadly across the uh, across the entire the entire state, um, you can see, and we tried to uh, divide this into uh, industry sectors supporting aerospace. But I want to call your attention to a couple of things. Um, the the first is the major military facilities and federal aerospace facilities. We went through and we talked about those just uh, just a second ago. But again, you can see the sheer list. And when you take a look at this entire list, it points to the very, uh, very vibrance and the critical nature of these military facilities, typically focused on advanced technology, manufacturing, or logistics and sustainment, literally leaders in the world. When I talk about Defense Logistics Agency Land and Maritime in Columbus, uh, again, they are, they are the leaders in, in that. They are the sole procurers of those uh, that, that hardware for fielded systems, but also consider Air Force Materiel Command down the road, uh, arguably in, in the top 10 of, of a uh, Fortune 100 uh, largest aerospace holding company in the world. Right? It, it's incredible when you think of the assets that are here, but then think of those as magnets of industry to, uh, to join around because that represents a, a unique value proposition that we'll talk. And the same in the Northeast when we understand what the capabilities and expertise that's exhibited at NASA, again, both Cleveland and Sandusky, those offer, again, tremendous opportunity space for co-location and clustering around, uh, around the research and development of the science-rich uh, military installations that that are that are Ohio, and and you can see uh, to some degree that effect in the top defense contractor locations um, that that are shown, and, you, and you'll see a laundry list of who who and what are the largest in in Ohio. But I'll, I'll call your attention to the breadth of their focus in the defense industry because it's not only aviation, it's not only aerospace, but it's also space, space com. And you'll notice those contractors, and again, dispersed across Ohio, uh, and, and typically uh, you see some degree of, uh, of clustering as, uh, um, as appropriate. The other piece I'll call your attention to is, is in blue at the bottom. And I think this is important. Um, it's Ohio's aviation heritage assets. It's understanding the history of Ohio. For its history's sake, is great. It's great. But you need, we need to understand corporately that over the last century, organizations, installations, and industry grew here for a reason. It projects a synergy, a capability, a confluence of, of opportunities that to pull any one is to destroy the synergy of the whole. So heritage is it's absolutely key. To understand how Wright-Patterson grew, for example, and to understand why the Air Technology Division, why the National Air and Space uh, Intelligence Center grew there around the research and acquisition of our own aircraft is to understand the synergies that those organizations bring. And that becomes critical in any, in any attempt to destroy that synergy. So that's why it's so key to understand the development of Ohio's aviation and aerospace assets over the last century in order to express the synergies developed over that century and then how one moves forward from, from that point. So I think there is a, uh, there is a strategy 
um, that is uh, that, that's, that's very, very important. We'll, we'll talk through a couple of these points in, in detail. But, um, but suffice it to say, the, the key, I think, is to rapidly expand the knowledge of Ohio's attributes. I mean, both the self-knowledge, internally educate to what we have in Ohio, what that prior map represents, and the bins, the four pillars, right, that any, any location, any state would be happy to have one of those pillars or one aspect of those pillars. We've got literally four key pillars that are leaders in the aerospace and defense industry, and they represent opportunity. They represent opportunity. So the first piece we got to is, is, you know, I didn't know you did that here. I didn't know the mission of, of all, and all of the organizations at Wright Pad. I didn't know what uh, the opportunity space is for test at Plumbrook, for example. Those are absolutely crucial, uh, crucial items to know, to understand, because in doing that, then we increase the advocacy pool of Ohio, that everyone is an advocate of the Ohio aerospace and defense ecosystem. Then we can raise the external profile of Ohio into the boardrooms of the world, right? The, the, you know, it becomes self-attractive so that those boardrooms, well before the opportunities are made public, understand that Ohio represents a key attractant for doing business effectively and efficiently. Um, and, and and then I think it's 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 then to aggressively seek out the new mission and in industry. I use those words in particular: new mission, military mission, jobs. Ohio now has a tenth sector, and that is the uh, um, uh, that is the federal and military installation growth. So they will invest in our federal and military aerospace and defense uh, installations, um, and then aggressively attract industry, a, a fundamental piece of, uh, of, of jobs, Ohio. Um, the, the new mission is really based on supportive community, on resources, on our workforce, our ability to execute the existing mission, then, 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 then we can execute and attract more mission. It's, it's really a follow the trail of consolidation, for example, uh, in acquisition that has led to Wright Patterson, and so the key is let's let's continue to uh, to follow that new mission growth, whether it is um, whether it is uh, in in Dayton or Columbus or Cleveland for NASA Glenn or Joint Systems Manufacturing Center in Lima in the Northwest. There's all kind of opportunity space that exists there. Um, the next piece, though, is to really attract um, is really to attract industry, uh, and that's identifying the industrial issues and then Ohio's solution before the a board of directors knows there's even a problem. We can engage right away, uh, and this represents a value proposition that uh, that you know Assistant Secretary Roper has always looked for: the idea of a confluence of manufacturer, re research, and developer and acquirer in one location. We're here on a uh, Zoom link, but ultimately in, in those kind of discussions, there's nothing that takes the, the place of an immediate face-to-face -face opportunity to, uh, uh, to modify, to work uh, issues in manufacturing and acquisition. So, so the idea of a confluence of those priorities is, is absolutely key. And then in, invest and develop the key technology thrust areas that would attract industry. And then the bottom line is ultimately to uh, develop advantageous alliances uh, that we're that we're not alone, but we are better as we work together within uh, within Ohio than uh, as separate entities. So, so with with that, um, that's really I think the strategy. Um, it really revolves around the four pillars and the unique power and attractiveness of those four pillars. And it's, uh, it's incredibly exciting to, uh, to see and be a part of that. So I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to the pillars, talk to the strategy, and encourage uh, you as, as we go forward to, um, to educate uh, e each other on, on Ohio and all be advocates of the Ohio aerospace and defense ecosystem, and then to project that 
to project that ecosystem beyond Ohio as, uh, as we can. So thank you again for your time. And uh, again, best wishes for, uh, for, for this event. And, uh, and I do truly appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak. Thanks.